Hello, and welcome to this presentation using the Rodian Schwartz NRQ6. This presentation will show you how to configure the NRQ6 for making different types of RF power measurements. The NRQ6 is a frequency selective or receiver based power sensor. If you're unfamiliar with the difference between traditional and receiver based power sensors, it might be a good idea to watch the video Understanding Frequency Selective Power Sensors before beginning this presentation. The NRQ supports four different measurement modes. The first of these is continuous average mode, which provides a numerical value for the power measured over a given time interval. Trace mode plots power versus time and is useful in looking at pulsed or other time varying signals. ACLR, or adjacent channel leakage ratio, is used when measuring the amount of power that leaks into neighboring or adjacent channels. Lastly, IQ mode is used to capture measured signals as IQ data for offline analysis. In this presentation, we'll only be covering the first three measurement modes. Before we discuss these individual measurement modes, we'll begin by going over basic connectivity. Normally, the NRQ is both controlled and powered over a PoE, or Power Over Ethernet connection. This requires the use of a PoE switch, or a so-called PoE injector. The NRQ is also normally both configured and controlled by means of a web browser, meaning that no additional software is needed to use the NRQ. It is, however, possible to control the NRQ remotely using Skippy commands or using the standard Rodian Schwartz Power Viewer and NRP Toolkit. Note that even when connecting to the NRQ via PC and USB, a power over Ethernet connection is still required to provide power to the NRQ. Our basic LAN-based setup, therefore, has the NRQ connected to the device under test, with a PoE switch providing both power and connectivity. Another Ethernet connection is made from the switch to a PC, which accesses the NRQ using the browser-based interface. By default, the NRQ uses DHCP to obtain an IP address, although it's possible to configure a static address as well. An easier way of accessing the NRQ is to use a default hostname, which is made up of the six-digit NRQ serial number appended to the string NRQ6- One last tip. If both LAN status LEDs are green, this means that the NRQ is correctly connected. After configuring the network, we can control and configure the NRQ using its built-in browser-based interface. The most important parameters used in every measurement are found in the upper part of the screen, namely frequency, bandwidth, filter, and attenuator. Configuring these parameters appropriately is vital for getting good measurement results, so let's start by looking at these. Unlike a traditional power sensor, the NRQ is frequency selective, and therefore the measurement range must be defined in terms of frequency and bandwidth. Only signals within this range will be measured by the NRQ. In addition to defining the bandwidth or filter width, different types of filters can be chosen based on the application, flat, normal, etc. A 30 dB attenuator can also be enabled or disabled. Enabling the attenuator will help to prevent compression and distortion, but will also lower the signal to noise ratio and increase measurement uncertainty. The auto set function can be used to set these values automatically based on the input signal characteristics. Another useful function is signal check, which displays power versus frequency similar to a spectrum analyzer. In addition to this trace of power versus frequency, signal check also shows the current filter bandwidth and the maximum input power. Signal check is useful when verifying that a signal is present and it can be used to help in troubleshooting. Let's look at a few examples. Normally, our signal of interest should be visible between the upper and lower bandwidth limits, here the blue dashed lines. This signal should also be below the upper measurement limit, shown in orange. Common problems include a signal that falls outside of the measurement frequency limits, a signal that exceeds the upper measurement limit, as well as the presence of spurious signals, or an excessively high noise floor. The first measurement type we'll cover is continuous average mode, which measures average power over a defined time interval. This is similar to the measurements made by most traditional power sensors and yields a numeric result, for example, minus 45.92 dBm. The two most important parameters that need to be configured in continuous average mode are the aperture time and the average count. Aperture time is the time over which the average signal power is measured. For example, for this time varying signal, we could set our aperture to 10 milliseconds and obtain an average power of minus 45.3 dBm. 
Average count means the number of measurement results, or apertures, that we average to obtain a result. For example, we could set our average count to 4 and average the results of 4 measurements to obtain a final result. Note that increasing the aperture time and or the average count will usually produce better measurement results, but will also increase measurement time. The next measurement mode we'll examine is trace mode, which displays power versus time. Trace mode is particularly useful when looking at pulsed or other time varying signals. Just as in the other measurement modes, Auto Set can be used to automatically set some of the measurement parameters. Another feature, Auto Scale, can be used to automatically size the power and time axes of the displayed trace. When working with trace mode, it's important to remember that in order to get a stable trace display, some sort of triggering is usually required. A trigger is a kind of condition or stimulus that's used to define the start and or stop of a measurement. There are many different types of triggers, but the two most common trigger types are internal and external triggers. An internal trigger is a trigger that occurs when the received signal crosses some user-defined threshold. On the other hand, an external trigger occurs when some external electrical signal is sensed, usually on a dedicated trigger connector. A missing or incorrectly configured trigger is the most common cause of problems when making trace measurements. The last measurement mode we'll look at in this presentation is something called ACLR, or Adjacent Channel Leakage Ratio. This is a common measurement for communication systems. ACLR measures the ratio of the transmit channel signal power that leaks into the channels above and below it. These channels are often referred to as the adjacent and alternate channels. ACLR is normally expressed in dBc, or the amount of power relative to the transmit carrier power. Since the NRQ6 is 100 MHz bandwidth, it can measure ACLR for signals up to 20 MHz wide, that is, 5 channels total, and predefined filters are provided for both 3GPP and LTE. Here is an example of an ACLR measurement made on a 10 MHz LTE signal. The transmit channel has a power of minus 31.22 dBm, and the adjacent and alternate upper channel powers are minus 45.7 dBc and minus 58.99 dBc. Let's summarize what we've learned. The NRQ6 is a receiver-based frequency-selective power sensor that uses a power over Ethernet connection for both power and control. A simple web browser interface is used to configure and control the NRQ, as well as to view measurement results. In addition, the NRQ can be controlled via standard Skippy commands and supports traditional Rodian Schwartz sensor applications, such as PowerViewer. To make measurements with the NRQ, there are four main configuration parameters. Frequency and bandwidth are used to define the measurement frequency range. Filter can be chosen based on the measured signal type, and attenuation can be used to prevent compression and overload when high-powered signals are being measured. Two additional functions are also very helpful. AutoSet uses the input signal characteristics to automatically set these four basic parameters. Signal Check provides a basic power versus frequency trace that can be used to verify the presence of a signal or to troubleshoot measurement issues. In this presentation, we discuss three of the measurement modes supported by the NRQ. Continuous average mode provides a basic measure of power, similar to traditional power sensors. Trace mode plots power versus frequency, which is useful when analyzing pulsed or other time varying signals. And ACLR measures the amount of power that leaks into the channels above and below the main signal channel. This concludes our presentation using the Rodian Schwartz NRQ6. Thanks for watching.